Si no te portas bien, el monstruo te va a coger por la televisión y te va a llevar. That was, that was my grandmother Maya's warning to me the day that we we're going to watch a creature feature in 3D in Espanol. Translation, if you don't behave, the monster is going to reach through the TV and grab you and take you away. What? So it was the start of the 80s, and as I remember it, this was the televised event of the year on my little island of Puerto Rico you would have thought that Puerto Ricans were landing on the moon. And I was a kid with a huge imagination, and my had just set my expectations. So that night, as my family gathered around our huge 15-inch TV, I put on my 3D glasses, and I proceeded to be as obnoxious as possible. I had a plan. The moment the creature reached through the TV, I was going to push my little brother Marcus in front of me so he could be taken into the TV. That was a solid plan, if you ask me. However, you may imagine that by the end of the night, I was left feeling a little disappointed because there was no reaching monster arm. There was no screaming little brother. There was no seeing someone be taken into the TV. In the end, we just watched the movie. He actually went to bed. Um, and that was my first experience with an original form of virtual reality called stereoscopic 3D. It took three decades for technology to catch up with my imagination. Today, we have actual virtual reality and you can transport yourself into a virtual world using a headset similar to this. It can either be tethered to a computer or it can be standalone and already have the virtual world in it. Kind of magic, right? Or you can use this one, which you just pop your phone in, use an app, and when you put this on, you're taking it to a different world. It becomes your reality. And in my time playing with virtual reality, I have made three major observations which I'm going to share with you today. So the first is that virtual reality is just a simulation of reality. And as we all know, reality is subjective. <laughs> Two, our brains are gullible. When you're immersed in virtual reality, your brain can't tell the difference between your actual reality, like your physical reality, and that virtual world you're in. That becomes your reality. And third, virtual reality has the potential to transform our understanding and our perceptions, how we interpret things, and our perspectives, our point of view of ourselves and of the world around us. So just a little bit about me. I am an instructional designer, and that just basically means that I distribute knowledge. My friends will tell you that my secret sauce or my superpower is my ability to take complex technologies and make them accessible by making them easy to understand. I strive to evoke change and transformation in people by building learning programs to help people, just like yourselves, to gain the technical knowledge you need for the jobs of today and tomorrow, because we know that's changing. So in 2016, virtual reality was just starting to hit mainstream market. And I had been playing around with augmented reality, you know, Snapchat filter type deals, Pokemon Go, Messenger, Facebook, I just wasn't building that. I was integrating it into training. And uh, one day, my Biff, Ann Rollins, called me, and she was like, hey, Myra, do you want to work on a side project with me? We're building virtual reality. And I was like, yeah, you had me at building virtual reality. She's like, oh, by the way, we have eight weeks and no budget. 
I was still in. I remember hanging up with her and thinking, this is going to be interesting because neither one of us had any experience building any virtual reality anything. And our experience with virtual reality was extremely limited. And the tools that were available in 2016 to build virtual reality required you to be a rocket scientist, something that if you see these two faces, neither one of us is. However, we had the opportunity to work with a 3D graphic designer, a game developer, and a web developer. And we put our five heads together to build an experience. And, and I were able to just do what we do best and we use our imagination and come up with uh, something creative. And we decided that we we're going to build a game because that was the use case for virtual reality in that time. And what we came up with was uh, a mashup of Taboo with Escape the Room. We were going to pair people up into five teams, or teams of fives, and one person would wear the headset, the rest of the team would give clues as to what they were looking for. We were able to pull this off in eight weeks. And we presented this to a group of executives that were trying to figure out, like, what is this virtual reality thing? And can it really be integrated into learning? And I'll tell you that when they first experienced it, if you've ever seen anyone experience virtual reality, but when these guys first experienced it, they looked like this. <laughs> right? It's amazing. And that right there is the face of transformation. Because when, once you're put into that virtual world, you're like really immersed into that. So fast forward to today, right? At that time, I was left a little disappointed that it was so hard to create virtual reality. But if you fast forward to today, the equipment price has come down significantly. You no longer have to mortgage your house to buy virtual reality equipment. And the tools that are available to us have become really easy to use. And in fact, you all will be happy to know that you have the most expensive piece of virtual reality equipment right in your pockets, a cell phone. And you pair this cell phone with an inexpensive camera. This is a 360 camera, and it's a special kind of camera. And uh, what it does, it has two lenses, so it takes one picture this way and one picture that way, and it turns it into um, a sphere that then can be rotated, and you can see what is going on on your screen. And let's just test this really quick. I'm going to connect to this, and you'll be able to see yourselves. All right, so I'm gonna, you're going to humor me because there's a lot of you here today. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take out your cell phones and turn on your flashlights. Okay, now put them up in the air. You see your flash? You'll start seeing them come up in a minute. There's a lag time. There you go. All right, so we're, since, look at that, it's like a concert. Okay, <laughs> so put your, leave your flashlights on, but put your cell phones down. And we're going to do a human pull. All right, ready? One, two, three. So if you have ever taken a picture or a video with your cell phone, put your flashlights up. Boom. Oh, look at that. I was already expecting that. Put them down. OK. How many of you have ever uploaded a photo or video that you've taken with your cell phone to, let's see, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr? Put your phones up. Boom. Look at that. I'm like a, I feel like a rock star right now. OK. <laughs> So last question, how many of you have ever shared that video that you uploaded to social media with a friend, family member, or a stranger? Phones up. I already predicted this. Put your phones down. Thank you so much. You can turn your flashlights off. Guess what? You have the foundational skills that are needed to create virtual reality. So let me give you a, uh, some quick stats. So there are over 3 billion smartphone users in the world, and this, this only accounts for Android and iOS. There are other OSs out there. This is just data on Android and iOS. 
and 90% of virtual reality experiences are created for mobile phones. So you can create virtual reality. By 2020, there's going to be 1 billion people using virtual reality regularly. Right now, it's being used in medical, it's being used in manufacturing. You can go to a mall and experience it, right? But you, as just individuals in the world, can create virtual reality experiences and share your perspective of the world with others. You can give others who may not have access to travel or the ability abilities that you have to be able to do the things you do by sharing your experience through live action video and virtual reality you will help expand someone's perception and perspective of themselves in the world and that's very powerful that's a really powerful thing and if you think that you don't have this ability, I want you to really stretch your mind and think twice. And I want to leave you with three action items. So the first one is, I want you to go out and experience virtual reality. If you haven't already done it, do it. Go to a mall, find someone who has a virtual reality headset and experience it for the first time. Because you can't really talk about virtual reality until you experience it. Second, I want you to create virtual reality, like really make a stretch goal. Even if it's not something that you have the equipment for, find someone who does. I know that there are universities that have equipment that you can use. You can go to the mall and do it. Create virtual reality and three, share it with the world. Share your perspective with others. Give others the ability to see the world through your eyes. And I'll tell you this, had there been virtual reality when I was a kid, I, would, you know, I, I wouldn't have thought that everyone was Puerto Rican for the longest time. <laughs> like, I, I really thought that everyone in the world is Puerto Rican. Had there been virtual reality when I was a kid, like, I would have been snapped out of that really quick. It took some experience and travel for me to really figure that out. And you can help someone expand their perspective on a number of topics. So I want to leave you with this. I want you to go spread good karma and positive vibes and help someone expand their perspectives. Thank you.